So yeah, I'm gonna start with a circle. I wanna like do a bigger circle, so I'm just gonna like try to <laughs> create my own semi bigger circle based on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna lightly draw like a little um, cross right in the middle so I can have a approximate idea of where things are. So you can see I like created this quadrant thing. All right, so I'm gonna start with the biggest thing I see there, which is the two tomatoes and they should be quite easy. And one's kind of over here on this side. Big tomato on the right. Good thing we don't see the stem yet, so it's just gonna be a round thing. And over here on this side is another giant tomato. I kind of filled out this quadrant. And the little detail, it has like the stems that pokes out of it. I'm not gonna be like super precise <laughs> right away. This is just like an approximate. Um, attempt at this dish and I'm not gonna draw like every single tomato on it. <laughs> I'm just gonna have like a approximate look and but still using the picture of as a guy and this other one is kind of right here. Okay, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna take a look at this picture and the first thing I wanna paint is the tomatoes because they're the biggest in size and the easiest. So I'm just using, I'm gonna use this medium um, brush here because it's like perfect for this size. And I'm gonna start out with like a little orangey yellow. I'm trying to create it. Cause this tomato has like a yellow highlight. So I want to try to capture that. So I'm going to start with a little blend of yellow first. And let's start with, let's start with this one on the right. So what I'm going to do is just like really go in and capture this right side with the yellow. And I'm leaving like a little few white spots here, as you can see, just because I want the highlight to be very clear later, or we can always go back with gouache or like jelly roll to create that highlight, but I also like it when I... So while this is wet, I'm gonna grab some orange and then kind of do like our own kind of wet on wet technique. And then on this other end of the tomato, I'm gonna start pushing some orange paint into it all the way up to like this edge because I want the yellow highlight to stay. And I'm gonna clean my brush and kind of tease and blend the side a little bit. I wanna, this is only orange and I, I want like a much redder color later. So I'm just kind of waiting for it to dry a little bit. So I'm mixing some red with that orange and Going here, right at this edge, adding some more red and just kind of letting it go. And in fact, I'm gonna, right where this tomato touches these two, I'm gonna add some red too. Just because of the reflection, They're, they tend to be darker in color around the sphere.
And so this is like the tomato almost half ready. I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So the highlight of this tomato, the light seems to be coming from this side, like where my brush is. So I'm gonna try to be mindful of that highlight here again. So. So I, I got some red now and I'm gonna just highlight it here at the bottom because this is where it's touching like more of the lower surface. So it's gonna be darker in color usually. And this one here on top. This place looks splotchy, but I think it'll dry nicely, so I'm not too worried. Because I can always kind of add more depth to it. So I'm going to work on the third tomato, which is this one here. So same process, um, kind of highlight on that end. I'm like leaving deliberately these like white splotches. <laughs> These like hard edges that against the paper that looks like it's about to dry. I usually just go in with a wet brush and like kind of blend them out. So it like really um, have a nice gradation towards the white space. So this one, you, you can kind of see like a little circle of light here. So I'm, I'm making sure around that circle of light, it's all darker in color. So, so here's the fun part. We got all the big red tomatoes. So now we can really do some variations like with a more orangey colored tomato. Lighter, they're lighter in color. Oh, and there's one hidden down here too. So I'm gonna do, for these that are under the thyme, or sorry, rosemary's, I'm gonna just give them a light wash for now. And we can deal with that later. So essentially like a light pink. Right here. And then these ones are a little bit more orange. All right, can I move on to the onions? <laughs> I'm gonna start with like a 
brown. I think I'm gonna try to not do red just to have like a variation in color. So I'm gonna start with like the ochre color. But adding a lot of water to it so it's like very light because I wanna build up to the dark color. So actually that was brown, this is ochre. And I'm gonna start with the, the darkest part too, which is right here at the bottom where it meets the tomato. And what I'm gonna do is after I painted that half, I'm gonna clean my brush and just use like a water filled brush to blend it upwards. So it gets the really, really light treatment. And then going into my darker brown, while it's still wet, I'm gonna add the color right to this bottom edge. So it'll start bleeding upwards. And I'll just draw the stems while I'm at it. Uh, next part, that green apple. So the apple looks like the color is mostly around where the stem is and gently towards the bottom side. I'm just gonna kind of follow what I see where I drew like a little circle around the stem. I realized maybe I should have zoomed in a little bit more. Here. Okay. So I I drew a little circle out from the stem and then I kind of drag it down to the bottom part. And then it's very light. I'm taking a clean brush and then just kind of blending out the hard edges here towards the sides. That green is very pretty. It's like darker near the stem, so I'm gonna add some more color, just kind of in that proximity. And then making sure this part is dark. And the rest just kind of like gently blends out. The color, the where it's lightest is over here, so I'm, I'm mindful of that. And I can even add a little bit more to this side because this is darker. There's some like texture you can see from the apples. So I'm picking up some yellow and just randomly dabbing some like strokes kind of that comes in from the stem and goes out towards the outside just to give this green coat some texture. And then while it's dry, maybe even like pulling it out a little bit. So I'm gonna do the lettuce here and I wanna do these green ones over here and the one lower here, oh sorry, a little bit lower to this side actually has like a purple tint and I wanna try to do that, but I wanna be easy on myself first and do the basic greens here. So I'm gonna use like a blue green cause I feel like our yellow is very, our color is generally very warm right now. So I'm gonna try to use a more bluish green just to give it some variation. Because it doesn't have to be like perfectly correct. And I'm gonna be much more like free with this. I'm literally just gonna color it kind of like that on one side. Maybe this is too blue. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> So this one, I'm gonna leave a little highlight on top. 
this way while I paint around the bottom. I don't have to worry about where it meets the, the bottom, where it meets the piece, because it's definitely going to be darker down here. But near the top, I kind of want to leave like a highlight, so I'm just gently blending this out with a clean brush. So, okay, this one has like little purple hue, so I want to capture that. And it looks like it's like pur purple towards the edges. So I'm just gonna start with the green and like right down the middle, kind of create my base green here. And then now dipping a little bit into the purple and then start tracing the outside and letting that purple meet the green right where um, it was wet earlier. Next thing we're going to tackle are the beans. And I think they're like a lighter green. So I'm actually going to mix ochre with um, green to create a lighter color, but still kind of darker than this apple. So let's see. Oh, that's a crow. Very loud. Is this a fun color? I should have had like a sample next to me, a sampler. See, that would be helpful if you have like a paper next next to you that you can try out the color. I think I like this color. I'm going to use this color. And so I'm going to actually just go along the shadowy parts of the piece. So right here, it's here that's darkest. And for this one, it's kind of right here. And this one, it's where it meets the other P. And then like automatically creating that white highlight straight away. Cause it's like really light. So I'm not, I'm not even gonna like put color on it. And then this one, this one's mostly in the, in the shadow of this P, so. In the shadow of this one. But right along where the slits are are usually dark. So make sure you paint along the slits. There. So for the basket, I am taking yellow ochre and this brown I have. It's actually a very light brown. So uh, I'm adding some water to it just to create dilute it. I really like starting out really like light. So this is kind of you no, know, I could I could use more water. So really light. Um, ochre here and then I'm just gonna fill in this part because there's less distraction over here and distraction I mean things I have to like be mindful of like I probably do the rosemary part last but I'm just gonna fill in the gap
because this is a very like watery layer, so it's almost already dry. I'm just gonna use a smaller brush actually, a little, a, a little bit smaller, just so I can get like some finer um, strokes. Mix a brown with ochre. So it's like a darker color on this yellow. I kind of want it to be a little bit more bluish. Ew, that, that escalated fast, so maybe not. <laughs> a little bit more yellow. Let's see. Yep, still a little bit more. I'm just trying to find like a nice shadowy color to this ochre. Okay, I like this one. So, um, let's start with this edge. This edge is easier. So I'm just gonna like draw these like lines along the shape. And for the next row, I'm gonna intersect it, like kind of in between it. And then continue until you're all the way down in the space. And then just to conclude the basket along the outer edge, I'm going to do the same, but, but not, like not really tracing your pencil line, but like making it disconnected in some parts. Let's let's do the let's do the leaves because it's easy. Um, now we need to just highlight where the shadowy parts are. So I'm I'm going in and making like a darker mix of my green. I'm mixing some green with some brown, so it has like a really olivey color here. See, and just being very mindful about where things meet like where it meets another object I think I talked about last time is going to be the darkest so right where it meets the apple um, I'm going to draw a dark shadow line and then using a clean brush and blend it out towards We're gonna do the same to the peas, um, except this pea has more of a greenish hue to it. So starting, let's wait for that side to dry. Let's start on this side. Uh, okay, this pea over here is dark on this side where it meets both, both tomatoes. I'm gonna draw that shadow and kind of blend out the edges. And then going in again, highlighting that slit and then where it meets the other piece. The junctions are all like the darkest. So for example, this part here, it's also dark. I'm 
And here I'm just gonna with a lighter green, but still dark, deepen the shades of this bean. Because you can see this one is kind of lying up over it. So there's their shadow here, and their shadow here because this tomato is kind of on it. Um, right here, it's the same way. You can see the shadow of this curve. And then right here where this one laid on top of it. With like a dark green, I suppose, I am going to mix some brown and some green. So it's a, it's a dark green, but kind of opaque because of the brown I use. And I'm just gonna start drawing out the shape of my pine. Sorry, rosemary, I keep calling it thyme. And they're basically like, just like these, sprites that come from like the same stem Um, the apple, I want to do the apple. So I'm actually taking some blue. Uh, mixing it with my green. So I get like a little kind of like turquoise color. Oh no, in my, in my light it looks kind of green. Like a turquoise color. So this is going to be my like shadow color basically. And I'm going to notice how like the apple along this edge is darker in color. So I'm gonna like trace this bottom edge here to up to this point and then start doing my blending thing where I take a clean brush and blend out the hard edges with water. And the good news is now that we got our rosemary, we can go back and just like be, be free about the tomatoes around there now. <laughs> and so just going in and giving it more opaqueness, I would say. I'm gonna now try to do some shadowing on the tomatoes and I'm gonna use purple. Um, so mixing purple with my orange to create a dark kind of like, like violet color that's kind of warm but still dark. And this color, adding some water to it though so it's not super opaque you know it's starting to look a little bit pale here and i'm just going to where the tomatoes meet like right here right where it touches the other two i'm going to draw this little shadowy part and then blending it 
and this one to right where part where these little spheres meet each other is where you need it to add the highlights. Going back to our purpley orange color, I am going to emphasize this part of this tomato. I'm like bouncing to and fro from my painting while I wait for one side to dry. I'm like working on the other. So I'm eyeing my onion now. I know that this part is the darkest. So I'm gonna take some of that purple, mix it with the brown I had earlier, and just kind of create that little shadow over here. It's almost completed. I think I can give this stem here a little bit more darkness. So I'm going to do that right around the stem. I'm going to use that purple to highlight that dark part. So I'm going to, again, use like a bluish purple, maybe more blue than, per than pink to create a shadow for that basket. So I have roll you know, just for fun gonna add some green I, li I like dabbing into all like the remaining paints on my um, palette because I feel like they kind of give it the original color of what I really laid down so it doesn't feel weird so what I'm going to do now is essentially really darken this middle area of the basket where all the fruits meet so here we're like liberally painting over this dark spot with the mixture I just created. And it's cool because the texture you created earlier is gonna show through lightly, but not entirely. But, so that's like the really fun part about transparent watercolor is that they never really cover up one another. So that's why you have to like do these layers. Okay. So kind of up to like, this point where there's so many complicated shapes all together. And this one will probably be around here all the way to this level. And here, actually on this side, I might just have it all the way up to the top edge of the basket, like say here. Cause it's kind of on the side of the shade. Like I'm like basically painting over my rosemary because it was dry earlier. So I'm not worried about that. Ooh. So what was that color? That was purple, that was some blue, and some green, a murky color. And then right here as well. Whoa, that's too much. All the way up to like, Leaving some yellow, like that white spot still. It looks like this part is the brightest, so we're gonna not go into that space too much, but all along this edge, because of all these fruits, they're all in the shadows. Like this part, 
this part here you probably just go up to where these tomatoes are and I think now that this is dry I'm actually going to go deeper right around these edges so creating a much darker muddy color so what was that that was purple blue and some green that dark muddy color and like really darkening up these intersections I have like one final thing I want to do to this painting, but I have to wait for things to dry first. And that's the rosemary, because I feel like they're kind of muted right now. The color of the rosemary is very muted. I want to create some lighter highlights. So it's either using the jelly roll, but I, because I have some gouache, white gouache here, so I'm going to use white gouache to uh, create a very opaque green. Oh my God, it's almost dry. so dry. So this is like my last step. So I'm, almost, I'm like basically done. Um, so you guys don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm just checking. Okay, see now I create a very opaque white, greenish, green, uh, pale green that will cover up the, the darker color I made earlier. So I'm just gonna draw over some of these rosemary. Creating the white um, highlights on some of these, like, what are these leaves of the rosemary? <laughs> the little things, just to give it some more dimension. Not on the stem, just on the leaves. So see, I can take an hour and a half to paint a painting if I want to. <laughs>